Call for papers for APEC policy conference. Landowners close Kokoda track. And 13 houses torched in Medan clashes. This is the National MTV News with Mary Bertullo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Monday's news. In the lead-up to the APEC leaders' meeting in November, the APEC Study Centre will be hosting a conference in an effort to influence public policies for APEC economies. The APEC Study Centre Consortium Conference, or ASCCC, officially launched its call for papers today. According to PNG NRI Director Dr. Osborne Sanida, the ASCCC organisers plan to package the outcomes from this conference, which will be submitted to APEC leaders. With Papua New Guinea hosting APEC this year, the APEC Study Centre Consortium Conference in the lead-up to the APEC Leaders Summit. The overall APEC 2018 theme is harnessing inclusive opportunities, embracing digital future. The ASCCC will examine this theme with a focus on an increasingly connected region. According to PNG NRI Director Dr. Osborne Sanida, the ASCCC will focus on the four sub-themes of regional economic integration and connectivity, structural reform and competition, digitization and innovation and technology. This, uh, so not, not all that is discussed in the conference will go through, but they, they will be considered. Anything that is important in there will, will, will translate to, uh, and then like whatever we, we, it goes to and the final uh, outcome of it, is a result that has started from being brought to the, the conference and then uh, translated forward. Dr. Sanida adds that the ASCCC aims to move away from being a traditional speaking conference to one that will inform policies for Papua New Guinea as well as other APEC economies. Conference is not just for academics. Remember, it's for, for academia, but for, for policy, policy analysts and uh, people who are technical to come and present. So it, we need to make sure that this conference, these seminars, must have something tangible at the end. They must contribute to informed decision making. Because if we just go attend the conferences for the sake of attending, then you, we, you can waste, uh, waste money and uh, you know, all the resources and you don't get anywhere. For the APEC PNG Secretariat, outcomes from the ASCCC will be critical in steering the conversation in the lead up to the APEC leaders meeting in Port Mosby in November. We, we, we are hoping that the number of papers which uh, Dr. Sanida and his people put out will be, uh, will be, will have a good response to it, so that we can have uh, numerous papers uh, of uh, uh, capacity building and uh, knowledge sharing that, that can come in for us to use to uh, uh, further our development aspirations. Mr. Ako adds that the ASCCC is also an opportunity for Papua New Guinea to learn from other APEC economies who have had similar experiences. And also the people-to-people -people connectivity aspect of it is important. Uh, most of the APEC uh, colleagues have never visited Papua New Guinea. And then uh, for them to come and see how, uh, how our business is done up here. And also we are hoping that uh, Dr. Sanida will uh, convene a number of bilateral uh, engagements with his colleagues on the side to, to look at uh, issues of a mutual uh, uh, benefit arrangements and stuff to go forward beyond 2018. The Eastern End Police Command is working towards reviving the mobile highway patrol service again. The Okok Highway will soon be safe for the travelling public and highway trucks. Under the new command of new Deputy Eastern End Commander Ben Turi, his main focus is to introduce proactive policing. Turi says his main focus will be on the safety and security of the Highlands Highway from Morobe all the way to the Enga and Hela provinces. This will need the support and the effort of all the MPs in the seven Highlands provinces and Morobe province to fund police to beef up its operations. Commander Turi plans to have two highway patrol vehicles constantly patrolling each province day and night. We'll revive or revamp the highway patrol unit and get our men to be on the road maybe 24-7 if all the MPs can assist, especially in terms of vehicle and so that we can be seen on a routine daily uh, rotation in our rosters that this unit goes down, meet the Jiwakas, Jiwaka meet the Simbu, Simbu meet the Goroka, and then up to Enga and Tari. So. The national government is currently working on the rehabilitation of the Highlands Highway. 
Tourist says police presence needs to be felt by the people and police can be quick to respond to a crime. This can also give assurance to investors to invest in our country. Uh, not only our patrol, but our mobile uh, units here. We have a number of uh, uh, mobile units in the province that they also, on a routine patrol, get a fuel, drive, stop at the main uh, places where there's uh, night bus stops, mm -hmm. sit there, sort of presence along the road. Turi also added that police in the Eastern End Command will be issued directives to remove window tints from the vehicles and must have Z plates. He said almost all the police vehicles in Mount Hagen have tinted windows and these can unnecessarily scare people. Turi is looking at beefing up mobile highway patrols and ensure that the safety and security of the traveling public is guaranteed. Vasinata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. Former Open member for Wabeg District Robert Ghanim was arrested and taken in for questioning by police today. Mr. Ghanim was escorted to the fraud directorate for the alleged misuse of nearly 40 million kina in assets. Police say Mr. Ghanim fraudulently registered properties under his own name. He was charged for official corruption, misappropriation and theft for disposing government property illegally. Police say other similar complaints regarding Mr. Ghanim were also registered and are being investigated. The Kokoda track has been closed for a week now. Landowners are awaiting the government's response to their demands regarding a share from the Kokoda Initiative funding by the Australian government. They say vital services are lacking across the Kokoda track and they are being forgotten even though the track brings in millions of kina every year. The tracking season begins in April. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill has called on Madang MP Brian Kramer not to engage in slanderous and illegal behaviour. The Prime Minister made the call following what he described in a statement to the media this afternoon as ongoing commentary, publish, publishing unsubstantiated conversations with other MPs, disrespectful, misleading and actionable in court. The Madang MP has continued to be outspoken over national issues, publishing what he refers to as his analysis of national and political happenings. The Prime Minister has called on the Ombudsman Commission and the National Information and Communication Technology Authority, NICTA, to investigate the Medang MP's published work on social media. Here with National MTV News, we'll have more of the day's top stories when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Five police officers serving in Leys Metropolitan Command have been formally arrested and charged with the death of the man whose body was found in Leys Ranwara two weeks ago. The victim and two others were picked up by the officers at Kapiak Street on Boundary Road and taken to the lake where they were allegedly forced to swim across. This resulted in the young man's death caused by drowning. He was identified to be from the Chimbu province. Lay police boss Anthony Wagambi Jr. says the five officers have been charged with deprivation of liberty and manslaughter. Mr. Wagambi says whilst a police officer's job is difficult to do, officers must maintain their professional conduct, adding that no one is above the law. He is calling on members of the Kapiak Street settlement to allow the court process to progress. Papua New Guinea Foreign Minister Rimbing Pato has assumed the role of chair for the Melanesian Spearhead Group. At the MSG Foreign Minister's meeting in Port Mosby this afternoon, Papua New Guinea assumed the role of chair from the Solomon Islands. This week, Port Mosby plays host to the 21st MSG Leaders' Meeting. Papua New Guinea today assumed the role of chair of the Melanesian Spearhead Group with PNG Foreign Minister Rimbing Pato addressing fellow foreign ministers from Solomon Islands, Fiji, Vanuatu and New Caledonia. In an age of constant change, Minister Pato reminded MSG members of the need to work together in unity, especially at a time when the Melanesian region was gaining prominence with Papua New Guinea hosting APEC in 2018. Let also convey to them that inherent in our cultures, in the use of group discussion to solve problems peacefully by consensus, it is a tradition that is inherent in Melanesia. Minister Pato also spoke briefly on the future of MSG, particularly given the recent report by the MSG Eminent Persons Group. We have not achieved all our ideals as expressed in that document, but let us in this meeting, we affirm our determination 
to achieve the goals that spring from them, a thriving and inclusive economy, a good education for all, social justice, healthy environments in which we can bring up our children. Over the coming days, leaders from the MSG countries will discuss a range of issues among top priorities, improvements of trade within MSG countries, which according to Minister Pato is key to the long-term success of the Melanesian nations. Our region, the Pacific and the world, will become more prosperous if we commit to the principles of fair trading. Prosperity will continue for our children and our grandchildren only if development is sustainable. The national statistician Rocco Coloma today said police must be informed of proper procedures before any arrests are pursued. Mr. Coloma was addressing media today, saying that the office has multiple functions, including that of managing the NID project with the Department of National Planning. He said his office is entrusted with 10 million kina to execute their yearly plan. Mr. Coloma's address was an hour-long reminder to the media of the functions of the Office of Statistics. He also cited that the heavy police presence at his office on Friday morning was an exercise that did not follow what he says are proper procedures. It's been communicated to the appropriate people in the police department because the process were not followed. If the allegations are correct, I have all my audits there. But you must understand and you must ask uh, people who do this investigation, what is the process that they take? And we are very sad because my staff were traumatized. Mr. Coloma said his office performs duties that are severely under-resourced and that the National Statistical Office is jointly managing the NID project with the National Department of Planning and Monitoring. My, my milestone for this year is to get the launch, launch the census, ICE, SBA project, uh, preparation for the census for this year. The milestone is that by end of this year we should have done the listing and compiled all the heaven places in this country. And then next year we start about 20% from this year. We want to make sure that listing and the preparatory work is about uh, 30 to 40% for this year. We want to make sure that by this year we should have what they call the computer assisted personal interview with the World Bank to start the process for collecting data on the household income expenditure. So this is a big milestone. About 10 million kina is allocated to the office to implement these service goals. These are written in the office's corporate plan for 2015 through to 2019. I'm investing in people in the monies that we have. And we have a, we have a small budget of 10 million every year. We have only about 4 million that is used for our exercise. Metropolitan Superintendent Perro Juno told MTV News that he will be making a statement tomorrow on the alleged arrest of Mr. Coloma. Harry Gimbari, National MTV News. Three men from Surumarang village sustained injuries and 13 houses were torched when they were attacked by other villages on the north coast of Medang on Saturday. Surumarang village is located on one side of the collapsed Bana Bridge in Medang. Acting Provincial Police Commander, Senior Inspector Jacob Bando, says the three men are in hiding, fearful of being attacked. They are yet to get treatment as well. Bando says at this time police are not able to establish what wounds the three men had sustained and the types of weapons used in the attack. Police believed Surumarang village was attacked following an argument over money collected from commuters. The suspects are known to police. Police arrived at the scene. However, the villagers fled for safety. The situation is still tense as police continue to monitor the area. Five primary schools in the autonomous region of Bougainville have received new library buildings. Second Secretary from the Australian High Commission, Nicole Smith, said the education priority is to assist PNG to improve literacy and numeracy skill outcomes for early learners. Without these simple skills, modern life becomes almost impossible. Smith said a library is important as it supports a child's literacy and learning. The Australian government, through a public-private partnership with the Autonomous Region of Bougainville, the PNG government and the Digicel Foundation continues to support these primary schools with new infrastructure. 
The rains may have stopped, but its effects has left roads in Aroma, central province, a serious worry for locals. Community leader Malama Makara says people in the Aroma Coast LLG remain neglected despite millions being allocated for the road in the past two terms of government. The poor road conditions have forced villagers to travel for hours just to access health and education services. The rainy weather has stopped in some areas. However, for the people along the Aroma coast, roads have turned into waterways. The travelling public is forced to pull trucks along most of the sections of the road. This has been the case for the past two weeks. Community leader Lama Makara says every year the community is told money is allocated for the upgrading of the road. Not recognizing the priorities of the what the people need. So they have, uh, you know, this is the point of uh, how we're going to develop our, uh, their areas, especially the water development are, uh, you know, really uh, missing the services. The poor state of road has also had a severe impact on health services in the area. The only ambulance has been out of service for the past two years as cases of curable diseases increase. Elder Makara has questioned all the funding allocation which have become mere rumors every year. People need a constant information of what is going on, you know, the past and the present and future information need to be informed to the people so they can plan ahead, especially in our area here. Communities now travel to Kupiano to access most services and they are also faced with the increase in PMV fares. Community leaders now want urgent intervention by the local MP and Health Minister, Sir Puka Temu. Services are not flowing and they are you know, in the minimum now. So people are suffering from these uh, services. Jack Lopave, Junior National MTV News. This is Monday's news. We'll have more after these messages. Don't go away. Welcome back to the news. Telecom PNG's marketing and development manager, Connie Aloni, is calling on winners of Telecom's top up and win cash promotion to come forward and claim their prizes. He says if these customers do not come forward before the promotion ends, their cash prizes will be forfeited. From 100,000 kina cash giveaway to now 25,000 kina remaining to be won, Telecom PNG has been announcing five lucky winners to walk away with 1,000 kina cash prize every week. But some of the winners are yet to collect their 1,000 kina cash prize. Manager Products and Business Management Connie Alone is calling for top up and win cash promotion winners to come forward and claim their prizes. This is our 15 draw. So those winners, starting from draw one all the way up, if you've not collected your prize, you, are, you can come to our business offices at any time. Give us your details. We need to validate your ID. Give us your bank details and all that. And we'll give you, give you 1,000 kina to you. If you don't collect your money, by the end of this, everything is forfeited. A lot of our customers have come and won. So you come and just verify your ID and we should be able to process your money and send the money to you. He says there is still chance for new and existing customers to enter the promotion by purchasing a 20 kina or more in credits to enter and win. We request our customers to at least go to our Facebook page because all the winners right from draw one all the way to draw 14 are there and 15 will be there as of today a few minutes later you can be able to see that follow us on facebook telecom png and follow us on twitter as well the 16 draw winners of telecom's top up and win cash promotion will be announced this friday once the top up and win cash promotion ends telecom png also has other plans to bring in and provide more promotions to its customers now for a very special day this week Telecom PNG is offering its valid customers a free 24-hour service for social media platforms such as Facebook, 
Instagram and Twitter, as well as Telecom's mobile and fixed line services. Godwin Eki, National, MTV News. The final entries of over 400 submissions for the 12th Toyota Dream Car Contest were judged on Saturday. Elamotos, through its Toyota brand, is the proud sponsor of this annual event. Entries came from children around Papua New Guinea. There were three categories in the Toyota Dream Car Contest for children of different ages to enter. The quality of the artwork was exceptional. Category 1 had artwork sent from children under the age of 8 years old. Simple lines and basic techniques were consistent in the drawings as the judges inspected each item. The theme of family was a big one. According to Toyota's call out for entries on their website, they asked, how can your dream car make the world a better place? They got the Sometimes car. drawing is not necessary to uh, explain. They don't need to uh, explain. So they get expressed by only color and design, and that's it. So, like, simply, if you have some, no reason, that, that is okay. So, oh, if we can get some fundamental idea from their flexible uh, mind. No? I see. Yeah. Like children. In the second category, 8 to 11 year olds drew what they thought was the fitting car of their dreams. The designs took into consideration the convenience of community and of environment. Category 3 saw children from 12 to 15 year olds Drawing cars that had the message of recycling, disaster management, and invention. So, in the closing comments or remarks, what I'd like to see um, out of this was um, the children using their initiative or they're thinking more about their, their communities and not just the individual themselves and their family. Most of the drawings that we've seen, the entries come through, uh, them focused on their communities and their schools the environment around them, so which was really good to see. From, yeah. children. From children too, and they're using the imagination and they're being very, very creative, so which is really good, thank you. In this year's national contest, the winners stand to win prizes and the privilege to be included in the Global Dream Car Contest in mid-March this year. Toyota believes this contest is incorporated as an educational program by providing children or students the chance to illustrate their imagination on paper, Harry Egimbari, National and TV News. Turning overseas now, Oxfam's British office is now facing more sexual misconduct allegations. It's now claimed staff hired prostitutes while they were meant to be helping in Africa. It follows accusations that Oxfam aid workers also paid for sex while working in Haiti following the country's 2010 earthquake. Accused of exploiting the very people they were sent to help, it's no longer just Haiti where Oxfam staff are alleged to have paid prostitutes. Reports that the same happened in Chad in 2006 at homes paid for by the charity have plunged Oxfam into an ever deepening crisis ahead of crucial talks with the government tomorrow. It doesn't matter whether you've got a, a whistleblowing hotline, it doesn't matter if you've got good safeguarding practices in place. If the moral leadership at the top of the organisation isn't there, then we cannot have you as a partner. Oxfam is yet to confirm the Chad allegations, but has denied a cover-up in Haiti, where senior staff used sex workers but were allowed to resign without disciplinary action. In 2011, an internal report could not rule out that the women were underage. A former aid worker for the UN says the sexual abuse of children in the aid industry is widespread and well known. It is a complete cover-up, industry-wide. The vast majority of aid workers are doing good work in hard environments around the world, but the failure to crack down on training, prevention, detection and prosecution of pedophilia has given the green light to predatory pedophiles to go to the aid world all over the world. 
Now questions are being asked of other aid charities. Save the Children, Christian Aid and the British Red Cross have all confirmed they dealt with cases of sexual abuse or harassment by its staff in the last 12 months, though they insist none related to paedophilia. That sector now faces the threat of losing government funding, as well as the loss of public trust on which they rely so heavily. A homeless man in France is using social media to show the daily struggles of living on the streets of Paris. His followers are paying attention. Now he's calling out French authorities for their treatment of the homeless. The homeless man who's become a Twitter sensation. But it's not Christian Page's first improbable change of fortune. He used to be a sommelier in a posh Parisian restaurant until the loss of his job, divorce and depression led him to a life on Paris's streets three years ago. The hardest thing, he says, is the isolation. L'isolement, c'est vraiment euh, le, le pire ennemi. C'est celui qui ramène dans la dépression, euh, dans les produits stupéfiants, dans l'alcoolisme ou dans, dans plein de situations euh, où euh, ben, on se détruit à petit feu. To avoid that, Christian uses the free Wi-Fi that Paris provides and Twitter, where he has become something of a star, collecting 22,000 followers in the space of just a few months. He describes it as a homeless man's diary in which he can tell of his daily struggles while he waits for authorities to find him some proper housing. Alors moi, je dormais là dans le coin. Like where he's tried to sleep, and how authorities have placed strategically positioned flower pots to prevent him from coming back. In one tweet posted on Christmas Day and retweeted 2,000 times, Christian showed the lengths that authorities were prepared to go to to keep homeless people away from spots they might find comfortable. The heat from the metro, he says, is what attracts the homeless here. The spot's now been cleared of the fence, which was removed just a day after Christian's tweet, perhaps proof that Twitter is allowing him to make a difference. Including on a small scale. As a result of his high profile, he regularly receives gifts, like these rechargers for mobile phones, which he shares with other homeless people. Twitter is a medium that has allowed him to share both love and angry outbursts, but most of all, just to share with others once again. The future of air travel is long-haul flights and Airbus is showing off a new plane that could fly non-stop from Melbourne to New York. It wants Qantas to buy its aircraft, which could do the trip in 19 hours. Taking off, showing off the brand new Airbus A350. Sporting a space-age cockpit, reworked wingtips and the promise of flying Sydney to London non-stop. We're very close. I mean, what they have to do on this aircraft is get us convinced we can fill her up with passengers. The French manufacturer trying to convince Qantas this plane can put an end to the long-haul stopover. With a good bit of engineering work here and there, a little bit of tweaking is going to be able to break that final frontier. The ultra-long-range model capable of the 21-hour flight. For Melbourne flyers, a 9am departure on a 19-hour flight to New York would see a midday touchdown in the Big Apple. The idea of 20 hours in a plane straight for most of us is, let's face it, pretty unpleasant. But this next generation of aircraft is designed for comfort. A little wider seats, a little more leg room, but most importantly, take a listen, far quieter than today's aircraft. The battle now on between the big two, Boeing and Airbus. One of the executives from Airbus that's here today called it a space race. It's like the Russians and the Americans. And both of them want to get to the moon, which is fly Sydney to London. The winner expected to begin flights by 2020. This is Monday's news. Don't go away. We'll have some sporting updates in Trukai Sports coming up next. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. More than 20,000 kina has been raised so far for the Kato Otio Trust Fund. The appeal started on the 12th of January and will close this Friday, the 16th of February. 
The account was open for donations at the public funeral in Port Moresby on the 12th of January. As of last week Friday, 20,225 Kina 24 Toya has been deposited in the account by individuals. Contributions ranging from 5 Kina to 100 Kina were deposited into the account. The trust fund was set up to help raise money to fulfill Otio's dream of building his mother a house. The total amount will be revealed and a check will be presented to Otio's family during the halftime break of the contest preseason trial match against the Brisbane Broncos next weekend. Buckets will be placed at the gates for individuals who wish to donate on game day. This will be counted during the first half of the trial match and will also be disclosed at halftime. The PNGRFL thanked all who have contributed to support Otio's family. The Witness Vikings and Canberra Raiders Rugby League clubs have also done similar appeals and have raised money for late Kato's family. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. The National Football Stadium membership and season passes for this year for the SPPNG Hunters matches are now available. The passes include Grandstand, Western Wing and Eastern Stand and will cover 12 regular Hunters home matches. Members will enjoy various benefits including different discounts, vouchers and activities including NFS Invitational events. The season passes are an excellent opportunity for corporate organisations to run internal rewards and programmes. Still in Rugby League, the country's top referee Paul Wani has been appointed by the PNG Rugby League International Federation at the recommendation of the PNG RFL to officiate at the Japan vs Hong Kong Rugby League test in Japan on June the 16th. PNG RFL Chairman Saki Sander said in a media release that Wani's appointment to referee a test match is a massive boost to the game's development in the country. The last PNG official to officiate at an international match was Graham Ainui 26 years ago. You're watching True Guy Sports. We'll have more on the other side of these messages. Stay with us. True Guy Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports to the Winter Olympic Games. Now officials are reviewing the decision to allow Australian teenager Tess Cody out on the slopes. It was a practice run that may have ended her Olympic campaign. Filming her swollen knee, 17-year-old Tess Cody gives a thumbs up, brave but shattered. She told fans the Olympics came to a screeching halt, got picked up in the wind and my ACL was not a big fan. It'll be four more years before this chance comes again. Cody's schoolmates at St Michael's Grammar in St Kilda are waiting. When you come back to school, your positivity is going to inspire everyone and we're going to be here for you. Get there soon! Wind is now a growing concern. The women's slope style finals, downright scary. Just five of 25 competitors made it without a fall, as Scotty James safely swapped the board for snow footy. Oh, he's absolutely greased it. And then there's this. The fastest of the sliding sports at 130 kilometres an hour plus. That's what awaits Alex Falazzo of Australia. In fact, from sunny North Queensland, and now our most successful luge athlete, finishing 28th. I could tell that the, uh, the ice was a lot harder, and um, I guess... I just wasn't prepared for that. While Alex Palazzo's final run was far from what he'd hoped for, it's still a monumental achievement making it this far. And he says he wouldn't have got to this point if not for the huge amount of support he's received from back home in Australia. Summing up his night as only an Aussie can. And a reminder, MTV is showing the Winter Olympic highlights at the following times, nightly at 9pm, weekdays at 1pm and 4.30pm on the weekends. That's it for Trukai Sports. Up next, the weather details for the next 24 hours. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. A look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region. A shower or two expected for Port Moresby and Daru with a top of 32. Thundery showers expected in Kerama with a top of 32 as well. Showers in Alota with a top of 32. 32 degrees in showers and thunderstorms for Papandetta. To the Momasa region, some showers expected in Lei. Thundery showers in Wau. A shower or two for Madang, Wiwek and Vanimo. 
to the New Guinea Islands region. Mostly fine in Longau and Kevang with a top of 32, 32 degrees as well. But some showers for Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe. A shower or two for Buka in the autonomous region of Bougainville, uh, top of 32. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mandi and Wabeg, all these major centres can expect thundery showers over the next 24 hours with morning fog. A look at the forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerma, Yule Island, Hood Point to Samurai Island. And with waters of eastern and western Mindanao Islands with waters of Samurai to Cape Vogel, Finchafen. And with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, sea 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Finchafen to Vitias and Dampier Strait to Siasi Island to Long Island with waters of Long Island to Medang, Bogia, Wiwak, Aitape, Vanimo and the northern PNG Indonesian border and waters of New Britain to New Island and Bougainville sea 0.5 to 1.5 meters. And a look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas. Coral Sea, sea slight with northwesterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. Solomon Sea, sea slight with northwest to westerly winds at 10 to 15 knots. Bismarck Sea, sea is moderate with northwesterly winds at 15 to 20 knots. And the Pacific Ocean, sea slight to moderate with northwesterly to westerly winds at 10 to 20 knots. The details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. Before we go, the national government owes Nawai Lutheran High School nearly 1.2 million kina in outstanding tuition fee-free payments. The outstanding payments have been accumulating since 2013. The board chairman for the high school then and member for Nawai, Kennedy Wenge, said the school has not been receiving TFF payments from the education department for almost five years. The member for Nawai district and former board chairman for Nawai Lutheran High School from 2007 to 2016, Kennedy Wenge says the government still owes the school nearly 1.2 million kina. The school has been ignored by both the provincial and national government since its establishment in 2006. Hawaii is mountainous and the students have to walk over rugged terrain just to get to the nearest school. The district currently has 100 elementary schools, 30 primary schools and one high school. Nawai Lutheran High School, the only high school in the district, has been enrolling students from the 30 primary schools within the area. Uh, this three component of some of them, 30%, true, true, long, we play in Oxim. Now I'm seeking Oxim in my high school, in my primary school. Now now we play with Oxim, we make him say something must come up, now we play talk to him. Now 30% or even 100%, our district must pay him straight to the school. Long a building, Mr. School. We play look, look, I'm talk, I'm you know come up, I'm to look. Plan the district now. Now I just seek to know what I'm doing before. Meanwhile, the government owes six primary schools in Lay District more than three million kina in outstanding TFF payments. The government says schools should not impose fees upon parents according to the National Executive Council decision number 25, 2016. But these parents decided to pay fees in order for their children to attend classes. Now, so all the time TFF you know, come inside long, time straight. And what's in the power of now, it's a big time long. Big time long, all by paying the school fee. Now, come to bank too, so all the late, uh, late information comes set on the and registration too, and taking long time through. Long, all by, long line, long going to the bank and pay me. So, people support him, free education, but they must come in time. Advance for example, this year, they must come inside long, late last year. So, meeting him was a TFF, now one is something here. That's just another one in the government policy. We all put him in place so that all can kiss a majority, blow out. Now, one and all can still stop inside the government. I said, I plan to talk to the TFF now on a Sunday. I said, I plan to buy him still. I plan to buy him something. I plan to buy one of my picking in the plan so that all back some education.
Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lei. And to end the news, a recap of our top stories this evening. The National Research Institute calls for papers for APEC policy conference, landowners shut down Kokoda track, and Papua New Guinea takes over chairmanship of Melanesian Spearhead Group. And that's the news, sport and weather for today, Monday the 12th of February 2018. On behalf of the MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night.